Hello and welcome to another video by reachpro.com and this is Gaurav Jain and I am an author and a trainer and you can get a copy of my books here which is about real estate investment and financial analysis as well as REITs and INVITS, what's new in the Indian stock markets when you visit our site reachpro.com or on Amazon. The topic today is Power Grid Corporation versus the Power Grid Invit. Uh, there could be some confusion for investors here because the names are very similar and even their logos are pretty similar. Therefore, let's just clarify how the entire process of formation of an Invit happens and what are the pros and cons you need to evaluate as an investor. So the Power Grid Corporation uh, formed the PG Invit. So this was the sponsor and PG Invit was formed by them after transmission after some power assets were transferred to that to the PG Invit and the same was listed on stock exchange the PG Invit was listed on stock exchange the power grid corporation had already been a listed entity when PG Invit was listed in 2021 and before I go ahead for more resources on REITs and Invits do visit our website you can get free resources whatsapp links and you are please requested to subscribe to the channel it gives us encouragement because it is also the first dedicated read and enrich channel for india so that today the topic also means that we are going to evaluate a normal corporation versus an invit that's the underlying theme of this presentation here see so in an invit is an infrastructure investment trust and the pg invit here is a quasi equity financial asset which is sebi regulated that's what the PG Invit stock is about. Now, if you see, this is how it happens that the Power Grid Invit would make assets and it would get make them operational so that they start generating revenues. And then the assets are transferred onto an Invit. In lieu of transfer of the assets, the Power Grid would take certain shares in the company. And then later on, an IPO, through an IPO, by means of a fresh issue as well as the current holdings, they can offload some of their stake from the invit. So the IPO in this case happened in 2021 where there was a fresh issue as well as the earlier offer for sale and Power Grid Invit transferred these five assets to PG Invit and the enterprise value today is as shown on the screen here. So if you see the NSE website also, the Power Grid corporation is listed like this on the left hand side on the top right the trade information is on the right and the power grid investment trust is given on the bottom along with the trade information so this is a side by side comparison of aspects of power grid corporation as well as the power grid investment trust today the structure of the invit is something like this that the power grid invit was a sponsor this, this was at the time of the ipo this was a snapshot. The sponsor held something like 15%. The rest was for public unit holders. A trust was created and that held various SPVs under which assets were held by them. So this is how the structure of the PG Invit panned out after the IPO. And the reason why this is done is primarily, firstly, to monetize assets. So power grid corporation would be monetizing assets and raising capital for new projects secondly the type of capital changes as soon as you put an invit on the block so the patient capital comes in so a lot of pension funds and uh, people who want steady returns and have patient capital come in who are risk averse because the assets typically happen to be functioning assets generating revenues thirdly it also frees up some amount of debt. The debt is freed up in an old entity and the new entity also has capacity to take debts based on the cash flows because the cash flows are visible and loans are easier to take and at a cheaper cost. And Invit is a regulated entity by SEBI which has infrastructure assets under it. Then it has completed assets where revenues are flowing in and therefore there are payouts which amount to about more than 90 percent of the cash flows are given out to the unit holders then the public invits are also traded like normal equity currently the lot size is just one unit or one share which can be traded by you on the stock exchanges on a regular basis just like you trade normal equity stock 
let's come to the formation details to compare both power grid and pg invit so power grid is a company under the companies act pg invit is a trust which is sebi invit regulations the power grid is a psu and this is a sponsored by power grid corporation which is a psu thirdly there is a 51% holding of government in india in case of power grid and in pg invit there is a stake of about 50% of power grid the power grid corporation was in corporation was done in 1989 and listed in 2007 in case of pg invit is was formed in 2020 and listed in 2021 coming to the revenues and the asset details power grid and pg invit both happen to be in power sector however uh, power grid has power transmission assets consulting and telecom interests also now in case of pg invit it's mainly completed power transmission assets also in case of power grid there can be new projects taken up so there is an upside as well as a risk in case of pg invit the assets are basically commission projects the ones which are already completed and generating revenues and the financial securities that the two can be compared with is that power grid has a massive market cap which it's approximately 3 lakh crore rupees it's risen quite a lot in the past couple of years and pg invit has about 9000 crore rupees as a market cap and you can compare the dividend deal when you look at the dividend being 13 rupees 25 paise plus there have been bonuses plus the cumulative the current market price is around 320 rupees in case of pg invit the cash flows are around 12 rupees a year and uh, the current market price is around 98 96 98 rupees but the future cash flows as per their projections in this case 12 rupees is going to dip as we made another video on that also at, as how sustainable this 12 rupees would be in the future then power grid you can take your uh, securities and take some loans on that also in case of pg in with this facility is not available at the moment now the point of view which one really is comparing is a corporation versus an invit so if you see uh, what you need to buy for that the choice of a corporation versus invit boils down to three main steps the first is risk and return evaluation which we'll discuss second is the stability and cash flows how stable is the stock and how what are the cash flows like generating from it as for you as an investor and the third the prospects of asset addition and taxation advantages and we'll talk specifically about pg invit here so coming to the first point risk versus return evaluation now we have new assets are possible in case of a power grid corporation but in case of pg invit they are mainly income generating assets in case of power grid they were also now diversified into different streams of telecom and consulting and so on so they have diverse revenue streams in case of pg invit it is mainly related to power transmission asset now stability and cash flows in case of pg invit the payouts are quarterly in case of power grid ca cash flows are not defined because obviously the dividends are given out in case of a management decision whether they would like to pay out the dividends or not whereas in case of pg invit in case of pg invit the quarterly play up payouts are mandated because that is what the sebi guidelines regulate now if you see the stability of the asset itself you've seen a massive rise in the past 6 months from something like 210 to more than 315 today so this is what the potential of a power grid corporation with a higher risk can be whereas this happens to be more stable in the past few months in case of power grid in invit now if you look at the third aspect which is growth and taxation advantages let's talk about pg invit specifics here in case of pg invit what you're looking at is asset addition which they are mainly relying on the sponsor and that is not happening as on date as we've seen in the way this con calls they are definitely looking at taking from state distribution companies but we do not know when that push would come secondly the taxation aspects are there are other reits out there which have a lot of income which is tax free because of the structuring in case of pg invit uh, as on date the taxation aspects are not very favorable there is a very small component only which is non taxable so let's see how this advantage which a 
inbuilt structure can offer is taken up by PG inbuilt at a later date. So if I were to summarize the points, why you should take the inbuilt in there could be four P's there. Firstly, there is a patient capital which you have, which you can put in an inbuilt. Secondly, the portfolio diversification need is fulfilled by investing in inbuilts. Thirdly, you could have preference for regular cash flows versus growth. That makes you an inbuilt purchaser. And the fourth is you are seeking a more stable stock in your portfolio. Of course, a very important evaluation criteria is the current price versus post-tax return. So do keep that in mind when you buy this or any other inbuilt. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe to us and thank you. Connect with us on our website or WhatsApp or Telegram. Thank you so much.